Welcome to another video guys and uh, we are going to start this one off by finishing winter Tarde. I am getting 99 fire making uh, there it is it is completed it was a very boring grind and I will get the uh, fire, fire making skill cape I don't know really how useful it is don't think it's that good it is a uh, light source at uh, dungeons like the giant mole and stuff like that but I do have as a last thing the crates to open from 98 to 99 fire making. If I do not get the tome in that then I am actually not returning here. Because we have another guy that is going to do Winter Todd to uh, 99 anyways. If he gets a tome then uh, I can use it but otherwise I am going to be done here. Now if you're wondering what my collection log looks like, this is it, 614 winter tods to get 99, I do have a lot more than 250 pages but it locks out of that, I did not get a dragon axe yet, of course not the tome and not the pet but I got a good amount of the pyromancers set items. And uh, the amount of crates I have to open is this many. Most of them are 750 points, some of them are even over a thousand points. So I've tried to give myself the best chance of getting the tome. And uh, we have the last 11 here. Doesn't seem like we're going to get a tome. Pyromancer's Garb, uh, we get some seeds, a Raynor seed, not bad, U seed, Snapdragon seeds, oh actually three of them, that's not bad. Last four crates, will I go from 50 all the way to 99 fire making without getting a Tome of Fire? Let's see what we're going to get, get some seeds, and the last one is going to be no Tome of Fire. Now if you're wondering what skills I got along with 99 fire making, I got 67 woodcutting, 67 fletching and 48 construction, which is some nice levels of course and an iron man to get for free, doesn't take any materials, but let's get the uh, fire skill cape here, yes that seems reasonable, and uh, I also actually have a hard clue scroll we're going to open, but uh, that is the fire skill cape. It looks pretty decent, I would say, but uh, not a very useful skill cape, unfortunately. But uh, let's open the hard clue and see what we get. And we get a very mediocre clue scroll. That's my fourth one. But now that we are done with Winter Todd, even though I didn't get a tome, I am actually just going to put Sulra, unfortunately, on hold for a bit because with the Iban staff and my current levels, it is a bit too much of a struggle to kill it. So I have other goals to work on now until the next person in our team is going to Winter Todd. And of course, as soon as one of our teammates do get that tome of fire, I can actually go to Sulra and just hard grind the boss. But until then, I have a lot of other goals to work on. The first one being completing the easy combat diaries that I worked on like two videos ago or something like that and the first thing I need to do for that is get 62 slayer and after that I can kill a worm which is the last hard requirement I need for the diary after that I just need to kill 10 Sarachnus and I think one obor. Second hard clue of the video still on that black demon task and we get literally pure alkyballs. I don't have a black mask right now, but I still saved one black demon for a Scotiso kill, which is going to be the first one for my entire account. I still get some Slayer experience for doing it, even if I don't have the black mask damage increase, so let's see what the first Scotiso loot is going to be for the account. And there it is, the first Scotiso kill. We get some adamant ore, also some tasks as well. And of course we get a clue scroll, that is a guaranteed drop, we only got one ancient shard which is the most common, but you can get a decent amount, I'm not sure if you can get up to 4 or 5, but you definitely can get more than one, so not the best in terms of shards. Let's see what the Scotiso hard clue scroll have for us, and even more alkyballs, surprisingly. <laughs> Oh yes, the 1 in 5k curved bone drop. Uh, I have to say I'm actually not very disappointed getting such a rare drop from fire giants because their drops are not too great anyway. So getting this is pretty nice construction experience when I do complete uh, the quest to hand them in. I think death to the Dorgishan. I had 61 slayers, only one more level to go to finish the diary, but I also did a quick detour and completed the dwarf cannon quest because that allows me to smith cannonballs and I'm actually going to do that now and then in my AFK time to help actually Max Nick get some cannonballs to speed up his slayer. He's currently 75 slayer and is by far the highest person in our team slayer wise. So if I can help him out on the grind as well to get tridents in the future and abyss of whips and stuff like that, I will gladly do that. 
This should be the last greater demon before 62 slayer. I can now kill worms, which is the last requirement I had before I could complete all the easy tasks. So let's finish the few last tasks I still have. The first one being Aberrant Spectre, which is 60 slayer, which is the first slayer requirement I had. And of course, the actual reason to why I got 62 slayer to kill a worm to complete a slithery encounter. Last things I need is a very easy Temporal's task, 10 Sarachnis kills and 1 Obor challenge. So I have to get a giant key, I have to do 1 Temporal's and 10 Sarachnis kills is probably not that bad because I actually have a Vigorous Chain Maze to borrow that is the crush equivalent to a Dragon Scimitar. Temporal's task done. Actually very quickly managed to get a giant key, it took a bit longer the first time I got one. Hopefully this time I won't fail the challenge, it is that I have to kill Obor mean while he is untangled. Shouldn't be that much of a problem with higher magic level. Alright, let's land a snare here and then right away attack him. If I splash this then I will have to try again. Should be the task done, let's see if it is. And it is, sleeping giant. So the only task I have left to do now, as you can see, 32 out of 33, is to get 10 Sarachnis kills and I'm going to do this solo. I hope that the Vigoras Chain Maze is going to be enough with the crush bonus it gives to uh, do decent damage to Sarachnis with super pots as well. So let's see how we do this. Uh, the maze definitely did not disappoint. That was not that bad. How long was that kill? Oh, there's no tracker on the time. I don't know why I don't have that enabled, but uh, that was not that slow, actually, and a medium achievement as well. Oh, Dragon Bones. That is actually, wait, that's actually more Dragon Bones than Solar drops. They, he only drops 12 and this drops 14. Not bad. I'm so used to having timers when doing Solar and stuff like that, but I did download a plugin. Should be a timer. Yeah, there we go. So normally these bosses do not have a timer, but I do have it downloaded now. So 2 minutes and 27 is really not bad for Sarachnus. Oh, collection log item, giant egg sack, that is 100 red spider eggs if I cut it open. I think a very slow last kill, but that is the kill number 10 for some chaos runes, it was a 341. But that is the last task completed, you can see here in the chat, I completed all of the easy tier combat achievements. So here we have the reward, we have the uh, Gomal's Hilt 1, as well as a 5k experience lamp that of course I'm going to be putting on Herblore. And do we get any level for that? I think we should. 43 herb lore, yes we did. And what this is, is um, you can wheel this in the offhand. I don't know really if it's good for anything. Let's see what stats it gives if I unequip my uh, dragon defender. It has no stats. I don't think it has any stats at least. Uh, but it is slightly fancy but with the higher tiers of course they, it becomes even better but uh, you can teleport to Trollheim with this three times a day a pretty cool animation as well and it is even closer than the Trollheim teleport so when we're actually going to do God Wars that is very handy. A dilemma I've had for a long time is that I haven't really ever had a good magic or ranged offhand. I've only really had the crystal shield as the best shield I have and that gives only defensive stats. It is actually very bad for ranged and magic because it gives minus 10 for both of them roughly. So I thought a good idea would be to try and casually grind the Odium and Malediction shards which are dropped by the wilderness bosses Scorpia. Crazy Archaeologist and Chaos Fanatic. You have to get one of these shards each and there is three of them unique. And why these shields are so good is because they are offensive magic and ranged shields. It gives actually pretty decent stats and they also have good defensive stats. So using these for overall future ranged and magic is going to be super good. A very slow boss to kill, but the first Chaos Fanatic kill is a Split Bark Body. It takes 3 minutes and 36 seconds to kill it with the uh, Broad Bolts and Rune Crossbow. So this might take a while because the drop rate of a shard is 1 in 256. First milestone kill should be kill number 10 for uh, some anchovy pizzas. And also a combat task for medium diaries. Because the Chaos Fanatic is a very tanky boss with my setup, it takes a long time to kill. I am going to, for the variety sake, kill all of the bosses that drops the shards, which is the Crazy Archaeologist, I've killed that before, which I kill with magic, and then I'll kill Scorpia, which shouldn't be that hard to be honest to kill with ancient magics now that I have that unlocked. So let's see if we can get anything from those as well, but I'll stay here a bit longer. 
Scorpio is a bit interesting in the case of that it's in a multi-zone, so you can actually do this as a group, and that's probably what we'll do in the future, but I did want to stay here for a bit and try out the boss solo to see how it was, because it's kind of hard to get everyone together at some times, and you know, I don't want to depend too much on my group on my goals sometimes, so I am going to probably be here for a bit, try it out, and get some decent magic experience at the same time, actually. Case in number 20, I actually get a bit faster kills now, I've perfected this a bit better for rune scimitar. Below too many kills, not too bad, but it is very costly on my runes. I think I'm going to go for 50 KC on Scorpia, I'm at 36 right now, it is very expensive in runes, but I think I'm going to do 50 Scorpia kills and then I'll go to uh, Crazy Archaeologist to 50 KC there, and in the future I am actually going to do this probably duo with Max Nick, we already talked about doing it and it is going to be a lot more efficient that way, but I think doing 50 KC on the bosses is a good start. Last Scorpia kill incoming for 50 KC, which means we're actually on the high scores after this, but uh, very low rank most likely. And the last drop is Uncut Emerald, and also a task completed, which is actually a hard task. And lastly, it's time for 50 KC on the Crazy Archaeologist. We also got a medium task with that one, not sure what that was, but uh, hey, it's a medium task. Oh my god, I saw the purple text, I thought it was one of the shards, but Onyx Ball Tips is not too bad either. Oh! Oh, there we go! That is kill 46, Malediction Shard 2. Let's get out of here right now. That is just before 50kz as well, beautiful! Out of the three bosses that drops the shards, the Crazy Archaeologist and the Chaos Fanatic are both single way combat, so I'm going to try some more Chaos Fanatic. If I would get the Malediction Shard from this boss, I have done the hard work, because after that I can just go with my team, farm out Scorpia super quick and rack up that KC and hopefully get the last shard. Oh my god, that is the Malediction Shard 3 from Pinkus Cat 2, they're doing Scorpia? And I was doing the Chaos Fanatic, and they got the third shard. If I get the uh, first shard from the Chaos Fanatic, I have the ward. So this is going to be kill number 50, but I think I want to stay here longer, because now this is the only shard that I still miss. The Malediction shard from this boss is the last one to complete the entire shield. So why not stay a bit longer to give myself a bit of a better chance to get it. Another milestone kill just reached, 75, and you can see that the kill time is widely inconsistent, it's like 2 minutes and then 4 minutes almost, but the times I get like too many kills is because of the diamond bolts enchanted, they go through defense sometimes, so it is very very nice. The broad bolts almost always got 4 minute kills, now you can see I am just slapping the boss with the diamond bolts enchanted, so definitely worth getting them if you're doing this yourself. And there we go, that is the 100 KC hit, and I'm getting about 20 kills an hour, so that means I've been here for 5 hours roughly, and I only have like 250 diamond bolts E left, and they are actually helping me speed this up as I said a lot, so I'm just going to stay here for the remaining amounts of bolts I have, I probably will end up at like 130 KC or something like that, so let's hope that I actually get that malediction shard in those KCs. And this is going to be, unfortunately, the last kill. Oh my god, no way! There's no way! Okay, oh my god, oh my god, dude, I, I'm serious, that is insane. Oh, we have the malediction ward! I was- that was my last bolt! Okay, that was maybe a bit of an overreaction, but I was 100% planning on being like, Oh, I really wish I got it, because it would have made the video so much better. Oh my god, dude, my heart is- that is so nice! Let's go and make the Malediction Ward maybe one of the first group Iron Man to have this. And this is the area, I'm going to use the shards on the lava somewhere, the Volcanic Forge. And uh, we drop the three shield shards in, we now have the Malediction Ward. Let's make sure that it is protected if I die, I'm pretty sure it is, yeah of course. And uh, wow, that looks beautiful, it's like the obsidian shield but for magic, and the stats on this is absolutely incredible. Look at that, plus 12 magic, and they actually have the same, both the Odium Ward and the uh, Malediction Ward have the same defense stats as a Dragon Square Shield, and a lot of people actually use the uh, Rune Square Shield for Solra because it doesn't give any negative ranged bonus, so having this for magic specifically, both defensively and offensively is very very good. Now that we're back in safety, let's uh, have another look at this shield. 
12 plus magic and 50 melee de defenses roughly and then 15 magic as well. No re range defense but I don't really need that for Solra anyways in the future because I would need the Odium Ward when I range and that has some range defense. So uh, yeah, super happy with this upgrade. Dude, compare that to the crystal shield I had before, which has minus 22 magic compared to this one. It had like minus 10 magic before. I was using this with the Iban staff. Now I can use this, which is going to help so much. But thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you guys are enjoying the group Iron Man content as much as I enjoy making it. Remember to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see future videos and click the notification bell thingy if you want to get notified when I post new videos. Until next time guys, take care.